Hey everybody. Here's that Dell 300 watt power supply that I recently pulled out of that um, AMD based dimension computer I just tore apart the other day. And um, let's go ahead and have a look inside this thing. Well, first, I'm going to show you the specs. Anyways, there's a spec label. Pause of use specs. Okay. The thing with these Dell power supplies, I'm going to mention this before I pop this thing open. The thing about Dell power supplies, at least the newer ones anyway, they're actually wider than the standard ATX power supply. I'm going to grab the standard ATX power supply just to show you what, we, what I'm talking about. Here is a standard size ATX power supply, PS2 form factor power supply. I'm going to set the Dell on its side too so you can see. As you can see, there's actually, you can tell that the, um, Standard ATX power supply is not as wide as the Dell form factor power supply. The screw holes line up. You can actually replace um, one of these with a standard ATX. It will fit just fine. In some cases, you might have a gap in the back of the Dell case. But the bad thing is about these power supplies is you can't reuse them in all ATX cases. Some cases that don't have... Um, metal guides around where the power supply slides in you may be able to fit it in but there's a lot of cases out there that have metal guides that will prevent you from installing this into a standard ATX case this is um these are compatible with standard ATX motherboards the only Dell power supplies that aren't compatible with standard ATX boards are the ones mainly from the 90's the old Pentium 2 computers, they had their own proprietary style power supplies, but ever since then, from the 2000s on, they are 100% ATX compatible in terms of their connections. So let's go ahead and pop the cover off. And um, if you read the description on my last video about the Dell where I tore it apart, um, you notice where I said that I thought for sure the motherboard was bad, though I believe the power supply may have had something to do with it too. This power supply has a bunch of back capacitors in it, which you'll see here in just a moment. Okay, here's the inside look at the power supply, and um, it's not exactly as bad as I thought it was going to be. We still do have some back capacitors in here. And of course, um... Most of them are typos, but do have a bulging L tech in there too. You don't see it just yet, but um, we have um, from what I see, two bulging typos on the output side, more or less this side of the heatsink, and um, switch around to the other side. Well, I'll show you what else is bulging. We have a bulging L tech next to this heatsink. I also have to change that out, and that is a um, if I can see the rating or not. Kind of hard to see. Oh, the um, the rating is actually facing toward the heatsink. That's why I can't see it very easily. But um, but yeah, we have those capacitors that will have to be changed out. And this is going to show you. Look at the power supply. They have the. Panasonic primary capacitors, Matsushita's, I guess that's how you pronounce the name, covered in a little yellow, I guess insulating tape. I've seen Delta do this a few times too. And the 5 volt standby rail appears to be IC controlled. There's only one main switcher, there's a giant switcher on this heatsink. And there's a little add on board for the 5 volt standby and probably some other things too. 
And here is that here's something that I've also seen in a Newton power supply before. They actually bought her to stick a heat sink on the bridge rectifier to help cool it. That's definitely a good thing. And on Dell power supplies, at least the newer ones, the intake fan is on the back rather than being the exhaust fan up here. And the thing about these Dell power supplies, as I mentioned earlier, the width of the casing is actually too thick to go in most standard ATX cases. I could actually take this power supply board, judging by the size of the heat sinks, I could take this power supply board out and stick it into another case. However, there's only one issue. And this seems pretty common with um, Hypro and, let's see, Hypro, Light On, and Delta power supplies. The screws, well, let's see, screw lineups are not the same in terms of length from one to the other as on most standard power supplies. You know, yeah, here's something else I meant to show you earlier. There's definitely a quality control failure right here. Notice there's a screw missing. That's not because I took it out. That's because there's never one there. So this board is just left to... Um, dangle as you can see that's pretty um, disappointing in my opinion for them to do that but um, as I was saying um, let me go and show you what I was saying about the width of the screw holes I got this old Vestec ATX 250 12E power supply here still in the case As you might be able to notice, the screw holes don't line up 100%. They're close, but they're not perfect. So I can't, I cannot actually switch this power supply board from this case to this case. See, if I could do that, I could take this power supply and stick it in any um, standard ATX style system. So all I can do is recap it and put it back in this Dell case and maybe some. ATX cases might actually be able to fit this oversized unit. So anyways, I'm afraid I'm going to show you the inside of this power supply. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask.